Hi everyone and welcome to another Nature Diaries. It's been a little while since I've done one of these but we're out today and we've just arrived at Kingswear and we're exploring Brownstone. So we're bringing you along with us and we're going to have a little nature adventure. Literally been here a couple of seconds and already seen a goldfinch. Tell you what, it's an absolutely glorious day. What have you guys been up to? It's been a while since we've done a nature diaries. It's been a hot minute. I want to know what you guys have been up to. What nature adventures have you been on? Where have you been? Comment in the box below. So we've just walked down. I think this is like a circular walk and yet you go along the coast path. But we've just arrived at the Daymark, which is a landmark here. So how amazing is this? Just a couple of weeks ago, behind me there in the water, there was a fin whale. Now that's what, the second biggest whale in the world? Second biggest animal in the world, in our waters in Devon, just off Slapton. So, can't get better than that really, can you? Maybe a blue whale, but I don't know if we really get them around here. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys know, but last week, so what date is it today? It's the 3rd of August. Ooh, summer's coming to an end. But last week was the National Whale and Dolphin Watch and National Marine Week. So every year, um, I don't know if it belongs to the Sea Watch Foundation, but they certainly run it. Um, we get lots of volunteers all over the country trying to spot cetaceans basically, because it's like one of the best weeks of the year to, to sight cetaceans. And um, as Operation Cetacean, we had the girls up there um, collecting data and we've see, they've seen bottlenose dolphins, common dolphins, we've seen lots of porpoise activity. There's been a humpback whale off Lime Bay. There's been fin whales, minke whales, like it has been crazy for cetaceans at the moment. So we just keep going to the sea, to the seafront and the coastline and headlands, just praying that we'll see something really epic. So if you want to see some cetaceans, like now's the right time. July, August is perfect, especially for porpoises because they're breeding and um, rearing their young and things. And the common, the common bottle, God, I can't speak. The common dolphins and the bottlenose dolphins also are very prevalent this time of year. Um, so yeah, and like you'll see seals and all sorts of other cool stuff and sunfish and yeah, just, if you really want to see these things, it, like now's the time, like get out on the coastline and have a look. But also, um, if you're a boat user, I've got a video that I made um, this week and it's all about how to behave around marine wildlife on the water. And this is something that's really important because a lot of the time um, when we're doing our data collection as Operation Cetacean, we do often see, for example, jet skis harassing dolphins. So chasing them, circling them, trying to get a spot on them. And these people, I, I, I doubt they actually intend to do any harm. They, they just want to see these beautiful animals. But unfortunately, this is one, illegal, and two, really dangerous for the animals. It can be really stressful. It can interfere with their daily habits, their eating patterns, their rearing, stress levels, cortisol levels, etc. It can be really damaging to them. So 
I've made a, vid a video about how to be responsible around marine wildlife and it would be really really helpful if you guys can share that far and wide uh, just seeing a dragonfly <laughs> it'd be really good if you guys can share that because it's it's all fact it's all based around laws and regulations legislation and it's just really good knowledge to have if you love marine life if you use boats if you have a jet ski even if you have a kayak or stand up puddle board like watch that video because everybody needs to know this information especially those of us who live by the coast and use the coast on a regular basis they're a little bit too hard for me to capture on this phone camera but if you're into butterflies this is definitely a walk you should be taking because there's so many different species they're all fluttering around enjoying the, the flowers and the plants and the sunshine Ooh, i'm sorry if it's too windy to hear but in these rocks here we just we just arrived on this little bit of headland and i could hear like a woo which is seals and Stu just got the binoculars on them and he said there's what six seven, now. seven seals down there gray seals We just found a huge fungi and apparently it's called the prince. So we've just officially hit the coat pack by the sea and we're now heading back from Kingsway in the direction of Brixham if you want a gauge of where we are in the world. It's really windy. We've just done what I would class as a slightly more advanced section of the coast path. There was lots of zigzagging going up and down. It's quite rough terrain and I'm knackered now but we were rewarded well with what was it called? A yellow hammer bird. And I will input a photo that I'll have to get online because we don't have a camera with us today. We're just out walking today. So I'll try and find a nice photo of a yellow hammer for you to look at. But this part of the coast path seems to be pretty good for birds as well. So if you're a bird lover, butterfly lover, seal lover, ocean lover, this one's for you. Don't wear shorts. Don't wear shorts. Yeah, don't do that. No surprise, it seems that we took the scenic route and there's actually a much simpler and easier path at the bottom of this field for those of you who aren't quite so physically able. But you know what Stu's like, he's always taken us off road on weird places. But I have to admit that time it was my fault because I heard the seals and I wanted to get closer, so. So another thing, are you guys following me and Stu on Instagram? Because we've got the Conservation Chat UK Instagram, but you can also follow me at Laura Loves Nature, Laura underscore loves underscore nature and you can follow Stu at wild underscore stew and we share lots of wild well lots of nature excursions wildlife sciencey stuff basically major geek instagrams so make sure to follow us over there if you're interested I do apologise for my cherry red face, but I'm hot. <laughs> but I just wanted to say like how lovely this trek is because we're back in woods now. So we had some nice coastal breezy, um, kind of drier terrain, lots of birds and butterflies. And now we've gone slightly inland into a little woodland. just found some grazing ponies and they're very gorgeous but an important thing to do when you're out walking and there's wild ponies is to make sure that you let them know that you're here so before we 
got into eye view we were calling out to them just kind of using like and uh, just letting them know we're here so we don't spook them aren't they lovely they um you will see on the sign that i inputted before but these guys make way so that wildflowers can do really well here and kind of remove any any other plants that shouldn't be here like invasive plants Now another really good reason for um, pony grazing on wild areas is they create a lot of dung and this creates food for invertebrates and uh, we actually get dung beetles down Brixham way so I don't know if maybe we get them here but poo is a good thing. Apparently there's 60 species of dung beetle in the UK so that's interesting. I'd like to see one actually, I'd like to find one, might go searching soon. That's us back in the car. That was a really nice walk, wasn't it? We really enjoyed that one. A little bit of everything. Fields, beautiful sea views of beaches, coastline, lots of wildlife. How many b butterfly species did you see in the end? Probably seven or eight. Seven or eight butterfly species, including peacock. And we saw ponies and cattle and lots of other beautiful birds and things so it's definitely worth coming here because we really love a nice round trip so you can park walk and do the full route and i will try and leave a photo of the route um, or some kind of map in here so that you can see it but definitely give this one a go we hope you enjoyed this please if you haven't already make sure to subscribe because we share lots of nature diaries as well as other wildlife conservation environmental and sustainability based videos and like and share with your friends and all that good stuff and we'll see you in the next video.